right, garden update. Here is the greenhouse. I think it's been a little bit since we last videoed. So all the cherry tomatoes are in here. Some are even starting to get ripe. So we have lots of different varieties. This one's purple bumbleberry. So these ones are gonna be kind of like dark and really yummy, high in antioxidants. Oh, I see some ripening over there. Oh, these ones as well. So these ones also turn like a bright orange. These are midnight snacks with some darkness on them. So beauties. All right, so greenhouse is coming along. And we'll go outside. So those tomatoes I showed you, we usually pre-pick our cherry tomatoes and we'll have them in the garden center. So watch on our Facebook page and we will post as soon as those come ready. We have little cucumbers here, just kind of starting to flower. So those will produce a little tiny pickle looking thing. Do I have any to show you? Mm, not yet. I think we literally just caught them flowering. And then Saskatoons. So this may actually be one thing that we do you pick this year. I know we have not uh, been thinking too much about opening you pick, but Saskatoons, just due to uh, kind of how many there are, and we have a lot of rows of them here this may be something we you pick. So again, watch our Facebook page. We, are, we will either get pickers or we will post them for you pick. And then we have some zucchinis growing here. So still gonna be a bit for those, but big long row of zucchini there. And squash. And Saskatoon, Saskatoon squash. Grey Ghost Squash. So these are a winter variety squash here. Uh, again, just due to us selling out in kind of every year, um, we have had to locate our cabbage cauliflower and actually plant it in a different area this year on a different property just because we're running out of room to plant. So I know lots of you are really sad we're not doing the U-pick part, but we've had to plant so, so, so tight together that it makes it a little hard for people to walk. So as you can see, right? So that's why we're hiring pickers to pick. Otherwise our stuff gets trampled. Edible peas are flowering. So we should have peas within probably a couple weeks because our shelling peas, I noticed, you can see among the weeds here are starting to get flat pods so that's not going to take them long so I would think a week a week and a half you should start to see peas on our list this is kind of a bit of a sad story so in these containers is not pesticides it's something called dimetaceous earth so it's a powder that we use and uh, basically we put it on the leaves to try and control these horrible pests called a Colorado potato beetle. So they're horrible little bugs and basically when they take 60% of the foliage like this plant, basically it really, really decreases production under uh, of the potatoes so we don't get a lot. So unfortunately because we do not spray chemicals, um, this dimetaceous earth powder is natural. Um, and basically when these bugs eat it, it almost has like a shard-like material that kind of gets rid of them, I guess, from the inside out. It's kind of a yucky way to put it. But otherwise we hand pick these off. So we have already hand picked this whole entire patch. And, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we were on our second round of hand picking. And now we've used Dimetaceous Earth. So just a bit of an example of how much work it it takes sometimes and you can see a lot of the foliage is taken off so so yeah potatoes usually are later on 
Um, we usually do not pick a lot of early potatoes on our farm because yeah we just don't again have a lot of space so we wait for them to mature up a little bit here and our lettuce so it looks so beautiful which it is um, but you taste it and it's absolutely bitter because of the heat so the heat matured it too quick too fast hi look at you jack jack hi and uh unfortunately we're gonna have to tail this under it's quite sad um, but we do have more lettuce kind of starting down at the end there. So we will be harvesting that. Hopefully the sun isn't going to be so hard on it. There's summer following this area because of weeds. You just want to be right in, hey? I think that's a variety of cabbage. There's dill behind it. This is second planting of carrots. Pretty sparse, but it will kind of fill out. Onions. Again, beautiful lettuce. Mom did a course, Connor Crickmore. Um, you guys should look him up on YouTube. He's amazing. And she got these amazing seeds for lettuce. And again, so bitter. Not even edible. So thank goodness we have animals. Um, and those will go to the animals. Onions and beans. So update on the beans. So we're at this stage of beans. So basically the bean forms right out of this little flower here. So pretty soon. Oh, look, there's a little one. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Where is it? Can you guys see that? Right there. That's a little bean. So um, probably again, within a couple weeks, we should have beans on the pre-picked menu. And these are all of our cucumbers. So again, we had to just pack really, really densely. We had to get everything in to summer fallow. And then basil will be ready for next week. So we have a really good amount of basil here. Kale was uh, actually in the garden center this weekend. Spinach gone to seed, so we'll till that under. And we have kind of like a spring onion here. So we're gonna start picking that here right away. So it's just like a smaller green onion. So really kind of neat. Beets, we're starting to thin out and we have those picked uh, in the center. And then carrots. So again, lots of carrots. It will be something that we will pick because what ends up happening is we get so much waste in our carrot patch. So just to give you an idea right now, how big our carrots are. Mm. This is kind of tricky. Hey Jack, I'm kind of still small. <laughs> so in relation to my pointer finger. So yummy for a snack and to thin out, but tomatoes are doing amazing in the heat. So you can see we need to water so getting a little droopy here, but man, they are producing. So I was actually looking today on tour and uh, they're looking good. Usually they don't do as well outside, but this year because of the heat and we were able to water and have a look in there. Those beautiful little gems. And then all the Swiss chard here. Sunflowers are starting to bloom. I have some annual baby's breath and then some of the flowers are started in here. Then we'll go to greenhouses. Mm, sorry, I started eating this carrot. So tomatoes in here as well. Kind of a big row there. And then any guesses? Celery. So all this is celery here. Hi Jack. I'm just following. And then this is okra. So I will show you. Mm. We will continue on here. I want to find a flower. There's one. There's a little okra flower. 
so the okra starts right underneath that. Mm hmm. All right, next. So again, we pick all of our greenhouse items. Most of our garden items will be picked by us. And peppers. So doing well, again, the hot weather. And then these are Danilo's Filipino Sealy Peppers. So he has a lot. Just want to show you guys one to see. Come on, Sealy's. Maybe he got some off already. Mm -hmm. I saw some this morning. And there's a sealy, so kind of like a green. And the chi the peppers, or sorry, the seeds inside are hot, but um, I don't find the pepper itself too hot. But it's called a sealy pepper. And then eggplant. So these are still blooming here, so you can tell that's eggplant because it's all purple. All right, onward we go. Oh, that one was hot actually. <coughs> Whew. I think it's the seeds. Definitely. Okay, black currants. Mm, he's looking. Mm. Hmm. Interesting look like they're setting fruit quite yet or they're oh yeah very lightly setting fruit might not be a great year for them but we'll have to see here but we do have a good amount of black currants sorry about the sun there sunset beautiful and then nanking cherries we won't get much off these they're only about two years old um so we do have Again, a good amount of rows of them here, but, um, but yeah, okay, onward here. Okay, I'm in the kind of newer black currant area here, just behind our older bushes. There's a good example of how they're setting fruit. So these ones are looking great. So if you haven't had black currants before, my goodness, please, please, please try them in your smoothies. They are unreal. So these will go, yeah, all black. And uh, you definitely pick them and freeze them. Oh, this one's loaded. There we go. So not turning black quite yet. So these are going to be at least a couple weeks probably. Okay. So corn is a bit of a tough one for us. It takes up a lot of space in the garden and it is a mess in the fall for cleanup. So we tend to just do like a family patch and if we have extra, we share. It is really, really hard to grow. It has to be started early and can't be put out until the soil is warm enough. So, so yes. Under here is broccoli. One second. And broccolini. Okay, so just protecting it from those little white butterflies and the moss um, for the season. So otherwise everything gets really, really buggy. And our sea buckthorn is setting fruit. So just have a peek in here. So these all turn like a really, really, really bright orange. Um, and if you look up sea buckthorn, I'll try and get it better better view here sorry hold on if you look up sea buckthorn um, it's used in a lot of ladies cosmetics um, we have a lot of Russian um, customers that uh, use it um, I've heard kind of different recipes like 50 50 uh, kind of like pureed sea buckthorn with honey and they keep it in the fridge for they use it almost like uh, 
cold effects or elderberry syrup. These are more potatoes. And then over here is our second planting of carrots. So they're a lot smaller than the other carrots. So we stagger planted. So we usually stagger plant carrots a couple weeks apart. And then this is also our stagger planting of peas. So same thing, we stagger plant those peas as well. So hopefully we go from one patch right into the other patch. All right, this is kind of a bit of a sad example of winter kill. So you can see healthy stalks and uh, dead stalks. These are our red currants. So they won't produce as much because they've had a bit of winter kill. So we'll likely be removing these um, into the fall. So these ones really got it kind of bad here. So if you ever see this on your plant, it's usually a winter kill situation. All right, second planting of beets. So these ones are pretty tiny still. Just to give you an example, actually, I'll go to our other beets and show you. They're over this way. Oh yeah, there's some here. Okay, so like, they're like kind of a, not super big, but kind of nice bite size. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's kind of baby beet size. So basically what we do is cut off the top and give it a wash and put it in the pot and boil it like a potato. And then the skin kind of peels right off once it's boiled and you can put a fork in it. And then we slice it up with butter and salt and pepper and eat it. Um, it's in our beet, uh, red beet velvet muffins in a puree. So these are delicious if you've not tried them before. I think they're the best at this size, little mouthful size. And then these guys are beets as well, but they're a smaller stage and they're cylindrical beet. So they're shaped in more of a cylindrical rather than, um, rather than round. So yeah, cylindrical beet, round beet. Yeah, and then this is kohlrabi. So kohlrabi kind of will grow and get a large bulb and then basically you uh, cut all the foliage off and cut it up and eat it. Some people lightly saute it. These are rutabagas. So rutabagas are turnips, winter turnips. Basically you have to get a frost. We have ours again spread. We have to thin them out. Spinach gone to seed because of the heat. So we have to till that under. Uh, more beans and a lot of weeds. Tomatoes, tomatoes. And we have arugula and cilantro is coming. Italian parsley. Again, coming needs to be weeded. And our fennel is coming, needs to be weeded as well. Zucchini. Raspberries this year we will pick. Um, we actually got rid of a lot of our raspberries here. If anyone recognizes the farm, we're going back up towards the red barn now. These were all raspberries. We have tilled them under. They weren't producing large berries anymore. So we have replanted kind of out in the back field there. You coming? Good boy. Come on. On to high bush cranberries. So same thing, these we have to pick after frost, they go red, and then we pick them after frost. So if anyone's interested in making um, cranberry jelly, um, we will have them. And apples, again, we will usually pick these. It doesn't look like there's tons though. We usually don't have too, too many to sell as we only have probably about 30 trees. So you can try other apple farms around for apples. Some of it looks like there's not even really any on. And then we got more zucchini here before we're at the red barn. And that's an update everybody. Thanks for joining.